to AWARE. We are dedicated to communicating information that inspires your positive growth and change. Are you interested in a peaceful planet? Are you interested in optimal health? Are you living with purpose? Are you enjoying your life? We realize each person can make a difference, and our mission is to empower your awareness. The choices that you make in every moment shape your life, and we encourage you to realize that you have your own answers and to always listen to your own truth. We invite you to stay aware. Hi, I'm Lisa Gar, host of the Aware Show Health and Mindset Series. And I'm so grateful that you are here with me today to have the opportunity to speak with brilliant experts in their field with solution-oriented techniques, with expansive possibilities, with topics that allow us to expand our thinking as opposed to staying in the confinement that we are told to be in. Although it really does keep us safe, it is also our option, our choice to be able to expand our minds. And joining me again is Coot Blackson. He was with me yesterday, and today we're talking about that level of expansion. He specifically in his book, You Are The One, talks about how you can really connect to those abilities to create your own truth and your own thoughts and, and really expand your mind. So welcome back. Thank you for being here, Coot. Thanks for having me. Yes, and I love what we talked about yesterday in terms of the the redefining our own self-truth and to really have the conversations as if today was our last day to live. So yes. let's talk about this this idea of expansion and how if we're living in um, these new times, which is probably going to be encouraging us to stay at home if we, if we have the um, uh, option to, how do you expand within yourself to feel more freedoms in your own body? You know, I mean, one just simple practice is I would definitely invite people to take time to meditate, you know, and access a deeper dimension of freedom within one's own being to connect to that dimension of their being within themselves. The second thing I would say is, you know, you can live in fear or you can live in love. And I think the choices that we, we make each day and the story that we tell ourselves about what's happening is going to determine whether we live in a prison within our own consciousness or whether we live freely. And I look at someone like Mandela, Lisa, Nelson Mandela, who was in prison 27 years. Can you imagine 27 years in prison in a tiny little jail cell? I can't even, I don't know if you've seen his prison cell. It was like I don't know, eight by 10 foot. So can you wow. imagine 27, 27 years? 27 and years. And you and I, you know, we, we've been in quarantine. It certainly isn't pleasant, you know, for what, a month, two months? But Couple times months, that yes. by like 100, times that by 27 years, it's like crazy. And so I imagine where must, have, where must he have gone to within himself to access mm -hmm. the source of freedom to not get bitter, to access a source of freedom to not... Uh, get mad, to access a source of freedom, to not give up. And I think one of the places is the recognition that, you know, at least how I'm choosing to see it, is, 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 a, is a reframe and a choice within myself of nothing has power over me unless I give it power over me. And mm -hmm. the more I'm willing to, to say, okay, reality is reality. There's a reality out here that I can't control. But what the real freedom is, is within myself in terms of how I choose to see reality, the meaning I choose to give reality, and how I choose to participate re with the reality that's there, and the responsibility to realize nothing and no one can take that away from me. Nothing and no one can take that internal choice away from me. And so either I'm going to be, and I'm not saying certain realities are pleasant, but either I'm going to be a victim to what's out here, or I'm going to make a bold radical, and it's radical. Mandela was radical. I'm going to make a bold choice to choose internally to be 100% responsible for how I feel, for how I experience, for, for the meaning I give what's happening. And I think the more we are willing to make a choice to not be victims, but make a choice to be fully responsible for how we feel no matter what is part of what 
can, I think, help us access a deeper freedom within ourselves. You know, they, they took away Mandela's ability to go outside. They took away Mandela's ability to see his family. It's okay. But he still was not a slave. He was not a prisoner. He was a free man. And I think we have to realize that true freedom is not simply a matter of what we have or what we don't have. I've worked with many folks that are billionaires, uh, Lisa, private jets, $100 million homes that are prisoners still inside of their own consciousness with the stories wow. that they tell themselves still living in scarce, scarcity. So if we can reframe what is true freedom, what is true freedom? True freedom, I think, is living in touch with ourself. I don't care what we have outside. If we don't have our truth and ourselves, if we're not living in alignment with our hearts, if we're not truly living our purpose, if we're not truly expressing who we are, then are we free even though we roam around the world? And so I think yes. if we're able to redefine this idea of what is freedom, what is freedom, to have it start from the inside and take the full responsibility to say, okay, Nothing and no one has power over me to determine how I feel unless I give it to them. I think that's where it starts, the foundational internal responsibility to take one's power back inside. And then from that place, from then from that internal shift, focus on what choices can I make? Because I know it's challenging, but, and, and a lot of times we're focusing on, oh, this is going to be the worst year of my life. This is going to be, you know, there was a moment where even I was like, this is going to be, whoa, what's going to happen to this year? Yeah, a but moment, do you I think that to, Mandela did that? Stop. I mean, he, he couldn't have. I mean, you think about Nelson Mandela, it's a great, great example. He had to have spent time visioning what his future visioning. was going to be like. Visioning. With no certainty. None. Visioning. How that, to me, that is freedom. So we can look at 2020 and go, this is going to be a disaster. This is going to be, oh, my God. The truth is nobody really knows what the hell is going to happen in the future anyway. No one knows if we're even going to be alive a month from now. Nobody knows. I don't know if I'm going to be alive right. a month from now. We don't know what's going to happen at the end of 2020. We don't, I don't even know if the powers of be know because everything is happening in a total moment of uncertainty. So we right. realize we can be controlled by what's happening out here or we can first take our power back to say, no matter what happens out here, I still have a certain sovereignty and a responsibility and an ability to respond. I still have the ability to determine who am I going to be, how I'm going to show up, how I'm going to participate. I have the power. And I think the moment we own that is a moment we become powerful and we access resources inside of ourselves that perhaps we weren't in touch with before. So personally, Lisa, I invite everyone to make this decision. I made a decision yes. this year. I looked at this year and I was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And I said, you know what? It doesn't really matter what happens out here. I'm making a choice to somehow open, to be open to the possibility that 2020 is going to be the greatest year of my entire life. People are like, you're uh crazy. But what if it, there's nothing written in stone that it should be the worst year, okay? Even though certain things might look not so great, but what if it could be? And so asking oneself the question, being open to the possibility, what if it could be amazing? What if it could turn out incredibly? What if, it, what if it could be better than we even thought? I'm someone that comes from a place of, here's one of my core beliefs, Lisa, that the universe is always working on behalf. The universe is always working on my good. So I'm, I'm kind of a conspiracy theory, th theorist in that the universe is always conspiring for my good. Conspiring for your greatness, yes. The, the universe <laughs> is always conspiring for my greatness. And so even yes. in this moment, Lisa, I, even though it may not seem <laughs> that great, but I really believe that, you know, the universe is always conspiring for my greatness. And even though in the moment my ego self from a limited consciousness may not see what's great about this, there must yes. be something great about this. Because many times if we look back on our past, some of the worst things that happened to us that in the moment seem like life ending worst things, how many of those things turned out to be the best things? How often do we get 10 years, five years, a year down the road and go, wow, if that didn't happen, I would not have met my soulmate. Uh, if that didn't happen, I would not have changed my career. But in the moment, we were not able to see it. So my invitation is go through the, if you want to be free, go through this time with curiosity. Curiosity is 
not projecting into the future with an already knowing sense that keeps you in prison. So we are the ones that are imprisoning ourselves, thinking we already know how, how things are going to turn out when we don't. But when we're in a state of curiosity, so when we live that way, we're in prison. Mm. But when we live in a state of curiosity, we're open. So it's the willingness to say, I don't know. I don't know how 2020 is going to be, but I'm open to finding out. I don't know what's going to happen this, this summer in the next few months, but I'm available to the universe. And we have to learn to truly be free. We have to let go of control and learn to trust life. I think we are in a surrender process to learn to trust that there is an intelligence of life. Call it God, call it infinite, call it la la, call it goddess, call it universe, call it whatever label you want, it doesn't matter. But there is an intelligence of life that is undeniable. It is living you, it is breathing you, mm. it is functioning you, it is digesting your food. It knows how to turn a, an orange into your flesh and skin and bones. You know Why is it that when we eat a, a piece of fish or we eat a banana, our nose doesn't become a banana, our ears doesn't, don't, doesn't turn into an orange? There is an intelligence that is functioning all of existence for billions of years. This intelligence is still playing itself out. This intelligence, even more so, is still at play functioning. And even though we can't see the totality based on our limited perspective right now, the more we're willing to just stay open and trust. Say, okay, I, I don't have to know. You know, I think the freedom is the willingness to live in the uncertainty and say, I don't have to know what is happening and what is going to happen in order to be okay. And to be okay with the not knowing. The ego and the mind is, con we are constantly, this is what keeps us stuck in a prison. Even in when we're prison, not in lockdown, yes. in the prison yes. of our consciousness, even when we're not yes. in lockdown, Lisa, when we're living life, constant stress. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's Lisa going to say? How's the show going to be? What's going to happen? This right. is a prison of our own consciousness. So the willingness to say, okay, I don't have to know what's going to happen in order to be okay. I don't have to know what will be in my future. I don't have to know. And even when I think I know, I really don't know. It's just the illusion of knowing anyway. So what if I learned in this time to just rest in the not knowing and learn to trust deeper than myself, my ego mm -hmm. self, my personality self, to trust life itself. Something is happening. Something is happening. You see, when and you cut your finger... State of when you wonder cut your finger, again. Yes, curiosity. Mm -hmm. When you cut your finger, Lisa, right, you don't have to be a spiritual person. You don't have to be a nice person. When you cut your finger, you could be a criminal, okay? You cut your finger, somehow the innate intelligence inside your body, mm -hmm. it knows how to heal to itself. It knows what to do. And so I think mm -hmm. we've lost touch with the deep trust of our body's intelligence. So we override it with drugs and pharmaceutical things. We've lost touch with the innate Nothing. intelligence of life itself. Like life knows even when we don't know. And so I think it's an opportunity to be free to say, okay, to surrender, you know, universe. I don't, I don't know what's happening right now. I just know something is happening right now because this something has been happening for billions of years. So, I'm available and I'm open. And I'm available and I'm open to something more. You know, something, I think right now we are making, Lisa, a, a, a paradigm shift and a phase transition in human consciousness from a ego-driven personality, personal power way of living our lives. I'm going to make my life happen. And many times we do make our lives happen and we do set goals, but the challenge is we set goals based on who we think we were. And many times who we think we are is simply a bundle of conditioned patterns from our past. And sometimes we do force our way to attain those goals only to realize the goals that we set, which were conditioned goals from sometimes unmet needs, weren't truly what we really wanted. It was just what we thought we wanted based on who we thought we were. And so I think we're making a phase transition from this ego personality way of creating and living our life, which is based on separation, to a soulful, spiritual, open, you know, divine way, oneness way of creating to say, what if I were to let life lead me? 
What if I were to be in the not known? Because when we live in the control paradigm of I'm going to make my life happen, we end up limiting our lives. We end up limiting what, we can what see, the universe what we can, only can do. Vision. Yes. Only what we can vision. And so yes. to say, I don't know. And universe, what do you want? Universe, what is it you're seeking to express through me? Universe, how do you want to use me? Universe, I'm open and available to being used. I'm listening. I'm available. And so I think let's use this time of so-called quarantine, stillness, to be still, to listen. To be still, to listen to our souls. To be still, to get, to, to feel the deeper vision beyond our mind that is seeking to express to us. Because I think what life can do through us, this is the freedom. What life can do through us is way more than anything we can do on our own. That's when I think we catch the wings of grace and true magic happens. One last thing I want to say about freedom, Lisa. The deeper I've gone in my own spiritual evolution, I invite everyone to think this. Here's what I've seen. The deeper I go, the less choice I have the freer I become. The more in my ego that I live, the more choice I think I have, like I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, the more choice I think I have, the less free I actually am. When I look mm. at the great ones, the truly great ones, they were free not because they just wanted to do whatever they wanted to do whenever they wanted to do it. The more they surrendered themselves to life itself, the more Mother Teresa and Gandhi and Buddha and, 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 and Mandela surrendered themselves to life itself. You could say their seeming choices lessened, but in that lessening, a greater freedom emerged because they surrendered to the flow wow. that was actually seeking to happen, that then they were able to tap into a deeper level of power. And what manifested through them in that moment was life itself. To me, that is the freedom. The freedom is when life starts living you and life started living Mandela, but he had to make that phase transition to say, this is not just my life anymore. This is life's life. What do you want to life? Wow. How do you want to li live through me? That's the freedom. That is incredibly deep freedom. And it shows, and it turns out that these people that you speak of became incredible leaders and mentors leaders. to all of us. And if you take it to the microcosm of your life where you can allow life to unfold, you could be a leader in your household, you can be a leader with your spouse, yes. you can be, a, you know, in those uh, to your child so that you don't feed into the, the, heard conversation of the complaining, which is totally easy to do, but you take that leadership role and you say, let's, let's be more compassionate. Let's be more kind. Let's let life lead. Let's find the opportunity here and expand. Even if you don't know what it is, like Nelson Mandela had no idea what it would no look idea. like. And that's a, the if you could just touch on that, because we cannot see what myth, it's going to look like. The, the, the myth is that we need to know. The myth that we're sold, even in personal development, you gotta know, you gotta know, you gotta know. I'm actually saying, you don't need to know. It's bigger than you. Your dream is bigger than you. What the universe, what God, what life wants to do through you is bigger than you. There is no way that Nelson Mandela wanted to spend 27 years in prison. And what if he didn't spend 27 years in prison? He said, what he said, no, I'm not going to spend 27 years in prison. I'm going to spend one year in prison. I don't want to do that. Would he have been the Mandela that we know of? Would he have gone as deep within himself? Would he have shifted his energy? Would he have visioned, thought, meditated as deeply? Would he have developed the, 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 the compassion, the integrity, the empathy, the insight, the soul force it took him 27 years to develop the soul force. And in maybe five or 10 years, look what he was able to do. So what if he didn't spend 27 years in prison? Would he have been the Mandela? I doubt it. And so on some level, was that a mistake? Was that bad? Was that wrong? Was that, was that a limitation? Or was that a divine unfolded alignment for his own unique soul's journey? To me, the real freedom is the willingness to live in alignment with one's soul, soul's journey. Everyone has a unique soul's journey. So the myth is you've got to know where, here's a myth. 
You've got to know where you're going <clears throat> to get to where you want to go. I believe that you don't. I believe that there oh. is an intelligence that, that knows. Because many times <clears throat> what you think you know is only going to be, is going to be limited by the level of your conditioning, the level of your current level of your consciousness in this particular moment. And so you won't be able to see. Your seeing is going to be limited by your current perspective lens and the, and the level of, 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 you could say, uh, of conditioning of your own ego in this particular moment in time. And, and then you end up creating based on that limitation. So you don't have to know where you're going, but there is something inside of you that knows and if you look at some of the best things that ever happened to us, that ever happened to you, Lisa, let me ask you this, Lisa. And this I was going to say, yes. Let yes. Me, look, look, you, you, you met your, your husband, okay? I don't know if you planned the exact time, the exact date, the exact moment, the exact minute. Wait, I'm going to meet him in this coffee shop. It's going to happen. I'm just going to assume it just yeah. somehow happened. And I think so many yeah. of the best things in life happen when we live in the flow. That doesn't mean you sit on your couch and do nothing. That doesn't mean you sit right. on your couch and watch, watch the news. And that means right. you follow you follow the deepest impulse of your soul. You go in the direction. You don't have to have everything figured out, but go in the direction. Take the step, take the step, take the step. You don't have to know where you're going to get to where you need to be, but there is an intelligence inside you that will carry you. It's bigger than you. And if you take the step, life will then meet you. If you take another step, life will then meet you because then it's life living itself through you, unfolding itself in itself, so it knows how to bring about, who to bring about, when to bring about the perfect fulfillment of what it needs for the fulfillment of itself through itself as you. I think that's when we're truly free. To live free is to be like, I don't know, but this is what I'm guided to do. So one thing I stopped, started doing, Lisa, is I stopped questioning my mind. So I, I, here's, here's how I live. I, I'm guided, turn left, turn left. Lisa, someone would ask me, why are you turning left? I don't know. I'm just guided to turn left. I don't need to know. But what do you mean? I have no idea. You know, we're living in Phoenix right now. I'm, I'm in Phoenix right now. I was guided to buy a house in Phoenix, Lisa. I was guided to buy a house in Phoenix. Why? I stopped questioning. Boom. And, and I'm not going to bore you with all the stories, but one thing that the next thing that the next thing. So many crazy synchronicities happen as a result of that one decision. So I stopped. I know. Wow. Live in a way where you don't question. Your intuition, you don't question the deepest impulse. That is life speaking to you. It will guide you. Let life lead you rather than you trying to lead life. Then you will be free, truly free. Wow. Then, Okay, so I'm going to be, how do you make any plans then, Coot? How do you know where you are going? How do you give Great question. any direction? Yeah, I would say feel the impulse. Feel the guidance and follow that. And then based on that, like if I say, okay, something's guiding me to go to Phoenix, Arizona, you know, to drive. So, oh yeah, okay, get my GPS, make up. Now, now I make a plan. Now make a plan based on the okay. internal compass. Now I make a plan. Here, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. Two, three days, visit Sedona. To, now I've made a plan, but I don't need to know where, what's going to happen and everything that's going to happen. The okay. more I plan, many times, the more I plan, the less I leave room for the universe to work its yeah. magic. The less I leave, see, we're living in a way that's so planned, so rigid, so controlled, there's no room for miracles to happen. Miracles want We've to show up in our right? lives, but life but happens no when you're. Life happens when you're trying to make plans. What is that phrase? Yeah, it's true. Life, I mean, it's, life, life happens in the in between. You know. Yeah. Yes. And so, if you're tran planning on maybe making a job change or even changing, getting out of a relationship, you just start to look towards what it would look like for the new things that you're interested in, for a new career, or if it's a finding a relationship, or what is it that you then those are the plans that you make loosely. Then you move towards that direction. Your curiosity takes you in that direction rather than coming up with a step-by-step -step process, right? Look, That's if, what you're if, if, if let's say you, you, you want a relationship, okay? Many times people set, set goals for a relationship. I'm going to manifest my relationship, Lisa, in 30 days. Life, life doesn't happen that way. 
it could th- then we limit how it can happen. It's got to happen this way, and he's got to be six foot tall, so, you know, blue eyes, blonde, got to look like this, this, that. Now we're putting all these limitations on life. So I'm not saying it's not good to have a sense of what you would like, at least the qualities of the person. The, you know, kind, compassionate, spiritual, aligned, integrity. Have a sense of the qualities. And then trust that the universe knows the specifics of how it should look and how it should manifest in your life. And so for someone that wants a relationship, I would not say, you know, go go look for love. I would say fall in love with yourself so deeply first, so so passionately first, so that you yeah. become the person. You become the person so that if the person showed up in your life, they would be so inspired to date you. They would so, be so inspired by you. So become the person that is so fulfilled and in love with yourself. And then create a life for yourself that is so alive and full of love and abundance and joy. And then Start just live. Don't wait for love to show up. Live right. your life in a way that is full of love and love everything. Be in relationship with everything because then, when that, then you create a different vibration inside of yourself that becomes attractive. Then, when the right person does show up, that is a vibrational match for you. They yes. will be inspired and attracted and recognize who you are. So then you don't wait. You don't have. You don't wait. You'll have an abundance of abundance of people. Abundance. Yes, create that <laughs> life. Yes, absolutely. Well, that is all. What that's what you are. The one is about your book, and I so appreciate you sharing yourself with us today, giving us this inspiration to take this time to really this incredibly golden time to actually dive into yourself and find out how you are the one and you have the answers in your own life to create it how you want it to be. Thank you so much, Coot. You are just a blessing. Keep living that life and being in wonder and creativity and curiosity. And thanks for the reminder. We appreciate you. (laughs) All right, blessings to you. And thank you so much for sharing this moment with me today. I hope that you will too also take this on and go and be back in wonder and curiosity in your own life. It is your right. Until next time, I'm Lisa Gar, and I invite you to stay aware. 